Hello everyone, this is Rafi from EYLib. Today we are going to play with Angular authentication, then role based authentication using Egret Angular admin template. If you don't know what is Egret admin template, please check the description. In previous video, I showed how to work with lazy loading and sidebar navigation. I provided the video link in the description. First, take a look at REST APIs, which I will be using for authentication. I built that using Node.js and MongoDB. You need your own REST API server. I will try to make another video for the server-side implementation. Basically, we will be using two APIs. One is for login, which is auth slash local. This API returns a token and user object. And other one is API slash user slash profile. We will use this API for checking the token is valid. Because this API will not give us user object without valid token. Let's start the SIP project. This is our sign-in page. Egret template have multiple sign-in and sign-up pages. For this tutorial, we are going to use this page. Open the sign-in component. Authentication starts with sign-in. User submits username and password. Then sign-in method of JWT auth service is called. Let's take a look at sign-in method of JWT auth service. Right now we have implementation of mock server which does nothing except send a response of a dummy token and user. Remove that code block and uncomment the actual implementation of HTTP request. We are sending HTTP POST request and sending username and password to the server. If the user and password is correct, the server responding with a token and a user object. Let's log that response to console and see what's inside the response. Great, we have a real token and a user. Let's get back to sign in method and save this token and user to browser local storage so we can use it. We are passing token, user, and a true boolean value to set user and token method. Set user and token method makes each authenticated variable true. Assign token and user to its corresponding variables and set the token and user object in local storage. I have created a service for local storage with few methods so we can easily save and retrieve local data. After this process, sign in method of sign in component redirects the user to a protected route and it is a return URL. We will take a look what is return URL in a second. Now open authguard file. Our routes are protected by authguard. Can activate method of authguard returns true or false based on authentication status of user. If user logged in can activate returns true and user can access the protected routes. And if not, authguard redirects user to sign in page and add a query parameter to sign in page URL and it's called return. So what is return? Return is the URL where user wanted to access before sign-in process. We redirect user to this return URL when sign-in successful. That we just seen in sign-in component. Let's see this in action. First log out and eat a protected route. In this case other slash bank but we landed on a sign-in page. And it has a query parameter return whose value is other slash blank and this value is URL encoded. Let's log in with username and password. Great, our user is authenticated and can pass through our auth guard after sign in. But what happens when the app is reloaded or user come back to our application and browser still have a valid token? We don't our user login again. So we check browser has token and it's valid. When the application bootstrapped or loaded first time, go back to JWT auth service and take a look at check token is valid method. We call this method inside the constructor of admin layout component. You can call it inside app component, which is root component of application. We call it inside admin layout because we have a landing base and we don't want to check token validity when user lands on landing base because this landing base is a public base. Check token is valid method sends a get request to API slash user slash profile and get user object. API slash user slash profile doesn't give us user object without a valid token. But we didn't provide a token from this method. We provided this token from the HTTP interceptor. Let's open token interceptor file. 
the intercept method is called immediately after calling any HTTP method. Intercept method can modify or block a HTTP call. Here we are just assigning our token to the request error. So in future for your project, you may need to make lot of HTTP requests and each request will require valid token and you don't need to worry about that. It's already done. Let's get back to check token is valid method in JWT auth service. We are doing the same thing what we did after sign in and error call if the token is invalid we called sign out method which removes data from local storage and redirects user to sign in base. If we reload the browser and open network tab of developer tools and filter by x is r we can see a HTTP request which have been authorization token in request header and its response is user object. So, that's it for the authorization part. Now let's start role-based authentication. Not every project need role-based authentication. If you don't need in your project, you can skip it. From the server side, you need to provide role with user object. I have already implemented role-based authentication on my server. On the client side, we already have roles defined in config file. You can edit the roles as your project requirement. For role-based authentication, we need to protect each individual route. Suppose we want to give access our other slash blank route to only super admin. For that, open others routing file and add user role guard. Then add roles from config inside data object. Now our blank route is only accessible for super admin. Basically, it's an array of strings. Config.authrolls.sa is an array and it contains only one string, which is SA. That's why only super admin can access. I could also use authrolls.admin array and this array contains SA and admin. So super admin and admin would have access. Let's take a look at user role guard. It checks the role array from the route data. If it contains the role of logged in user role, then it returns true. Otherwise it returns false and shows an alert to the user that the page is not accessible. Let's quickly add another unprotected route so we can see how a protected route behave. Let's see this in action. Right now I am logged in as a super user. We can see that in local storage and I can access the route. If I log in with another account whose account role is not super admin, great, I can access the unprotected route and not the protected one. That's it for today.